Hey guys, welcome back. So the holidays are over, the Christmas magic is no longer in the air, which means that we still have those long nights, the days get darker earlier, and things just kind of are overall dreary depending on where you live. I know for me, living in the Pacific Northwest, it gets dark at like, before five which that's not it i'm not loving that but um i have to bear it and in order to do that i rely a lot on um basically feeling cozy at home which brings me to the point of this video i want to talk all about cozy mysteries and huga Now, I know, I know the whole concept of Huga um, was big. I don't know if it's still a thing, but for me, living somewhere where it is dark for a long period of time, I really leaned into it and rely on it um, to basically get me through. And I thought it would be fun to kind of associate cozies or uh, cozy mysteries. I'm gonna be saying cozy a lot. Let me just kind of put that out there. <laughs> so I have to make the distinction. Um, so. I really wanted to talk about cozy mysteries as they kind of fit into the cozy lifestyle, the huga lifestyle. I do have my book here. I admittedly dust it off every uh, wintry season just to kind of recap basically, but if you're unfamiliar with huga, which I know most of you probably are, but essentially it is this Danish uh, concept basically of bringing the cozy elements into your lifestyle so that you can essentially um, live a better, more well-rounded life, especially with those darker months where um, there's no sunlight, the days are long, and you really don't want to fall into any kind of seasonal depression. And so these are the things that they practice um, in the kind of Danish lifestyle that's just kind of part of their thing that helps them get through that. There are a few things that kind of um, encompass the huga concept basically and by no means am I an expert obviously and by no means is this a comprehensive list but there are some elements that I think are overarching that I really relied on to connect to cozy mysteries um, because I feel like that's just a fun thing to do. You guys have been around my channel long enough to know that I like to incorporate them or find ways to incorporate other things to match them together and I thought cozies cozy lifestyle it, it's just perfect it's a match made in heaven so um let's go ahead and just really dive into it so again with the kind of huga concept there are certain pillars that are part of it and um the cozy mysteries that i picked out match to those pillars the first kind of element in the whole huga concept the cozy lifestyle um is really about textures and fabrics the idea is that you want to be um cozy and there are just certain fabrics that lend itself to that so like knitted things quilts really large comforting blankets um things that are oversized that you really just snuggle into when you're at home sitting on the couch that kind of stuff us as readers we are we're already familiar with that <laughs> so we're already pros at that but that said I've got a couple cozy mysteries that fit within that that I think are super fun um, if you want to follow along so again cozy fabrics obviously that brings to mind knitting so we've got the vampires knitting club I think that that's a fun cozy to go along with this um, element and so I actually had uh, the first book in this series as part of my Teacups and Murder Cozy Mysteries uh, book club discussion some months back into the fall. This one was super fun. It's exactly what it sounds like, which is a knitting club that is comprised of vampires. This falls under kind of the knitting category, and I thought that was a super fun one for me to kind of incorporate into this. Another one that I have, um, we're gonna switch gears a bit. It deals with quilting, which there are buckets of knitting cozy mysteries. I feel like knitting and cozies go hand in hand, but like I, I know there are a lot of quilting ones too, but not as many as knitting. So I wanted to give quilts some love and bring up this next series, which um, the name of the first book is called Fool's Pattern. And the name of the series is the Benny Harper Mystery Series. There are a bunch of books in this series, like a lot of books in the series. I want to say over 15. But what's really fun about this one is each book is named after a quilting pattern. Um, I am by no means a quilting expert. 
I know diddly about quilting, if I'm being honest, other than I love to appreciate the different uh, patterns. So Fool's Puzzle, again, which is the first book, apparently that is a quilting pattern. That's cool, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to kind of like the next element um, when it comes to huga, and that's all about lighting. They place a huge emphasis on lighting. You really want little pockets of lights throughout your home. That's kind of what the concept is. Little pools of warm glows, um, so that way that kind of adds into the coziness. So most of the times they really talk about lights that um, have like an orange tint to them. If you have a fireplace, that's great too because that's a concentrated pool of light that's not blinding but very comforting especially because it literally radiates heat and warmth um but anyway um to go along with that they suggest candles and i feel like i have to also mention that the book says that it's usually unscented candles so like my bath and body work girlies like if you've got your candles that's cool and all, but try to also find candles that are unscented um, just because they don't necessarily interfere with your sense of smell, especially if your house smells like something else, like warm cookies or something like that. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I'm getting off track. So for the whole lighting situation when it comes to Huga, I did find a candle cozy mystery. This one has actually been on my TBR for a while and I'm like, oh, this is perfect. I can put it into a video. Um, but it's the candle making series and it's called at wick's end which is adorable and i just think that that's just such a fun concept in general making candles and the element of candles in general fits into the huga concept that we're going with here so um so there you have it <laughs> another thing that um is part of the whole being cozy concept especially when you're home and it's dark is um kind of prioritizing slow living entertainment and by that i mean um yes a netflix binge is great but you don't want to spend all night every night for months on end just glued to the tv and so what do you do other than find more slow paced forms of entertaining yourself so reading um <laughs> excuse me i guess technically knitting is in there but we've already covered knitting um puzzles that's a really big thing especially because there are a variety of puzzles some you can do by yourself which is great and then others you can do um with friends and family which is kind of another element of this whole cozy lifestyle so i've got two examples here both of them are puzzles the first one is a sudoku related one death by sudoku which um i'm a fan which is weird because i'm not loving math or numbers but i like sudoku i don't know i guess it's a different kind of thing um so i wanted to bring that up on this list and then the other one is um a crossword puzzle mystery which i know there are technically a handful of crossword puzzle cozies so um if you don't like this example feel free to just venture out and find another one i know that the hallmark movies mystery channel actually has a series Though I don't know if that's based on a book, but anyway, Lacey Chabert is in it and it's about crossword puzzles. But the one that I'm talking about is simply called The Crossword Murder. Um, pretty straightforward. That way, if you don't care too much about splitting hairs, you know that um, you can identify this one based simply on the title. So um, that's another really big thing, which I have to say, uh, this year I really tried to focus on finding more kind of slow hobbies. Um, I actually picked up um, Yahtzee, <laughs> the, yes, the old school game for my husband and I to play, and I've really been enjoying it. I can't lie, I'm probably way late to the game, I know. Um, some of you may not even like it and think that it's like super lame or like a grandma thing. That's who I am. I'm a lame grandma. That's fine. But I've been loving Yahtzee. So that's kind of been my um, recent addition to kind of like our slow living evening hobby, um, which I love. So do you, if you've never played Yahtzee, I recommend trying it out. But you've also got these other books if you kind of want to live vicariously through these characters. <laughs> okay, so this next one, it's a bit nebulous because I feel like the idea of these cozies fit into the Huga concept but I couldn't find a specific like one-liner in order to encapsulate why I added these to the list so 
just kind of bear with me as I talk through because it in my head it makes sense so basically I've got some cozies on here that deal with um, antiques thrifts used clothing stores that kind of stuff because for me part of the kind of hookah concept is to um, bring care into your home but also um, give things a second life so instead of just constant overburdening with brand new consumerism the idea is to kind of slow down look through things that have been uh, passed on so that you can give them a second life or, or a resurgence which trust me as somebody who loves prime shipping i am not against that at all but it's just a different kind of activity you know what i mean if you're going into a thrift store and you're browsing the aisles, you stumble across something that you're looking for, or even better, you stumble across something that you didn't even know that you were looking for, but it's an amazing deal and you can already imagine how it's gonna fit into your home, and that's perfect, whether that's actual items for your home, home decor, or whether it's clothing from a vintage clothing store. I just think that it's fun, it lends itself to kind of creativity, and to me that really kind of goes into the hookah box. For that whole concept, I've got two books for you. One is fashion, one is home decor related. <laughs> so for the fashion, we've got the first book in the Witchcraft Mystery series by Julia Blackwell, um, which is called Secondhand Spirit. This one is about a woman who essentially owns a vintage clothing store. There are some paranormal aspects to it, obviously, because she's a witch. Um, it's a long-standing series. The covers are amazing. Um, but like I said, it takes place at a vintage clothing store, which I think is so fun. And now that I'm thinking about it, it goes along with the whole textile thing when when it comes to hygge, um, because obviously those kind of stores are filled with all types of textures and different fabrics and colors and everything like that, which you can, the possibilities are endless for you to put them together. Um, the other one, it's called Consigned to Death. Um, this is the Josie Prescott Antique Mystery Series, and this one is perfect if you're a fan of the Antiques Roadshow show, Antiques Roadshow fans of Antiques Roadshow, <laughs> um, which I am because obviously I'm a grandma. Um, but again, this one deals a lot with thrifting and antiquing, which if you've ever been antiquing, you know the care that goes into it in terms of finding objects that are, um, you know, much more valuable than they seem, or maybe they hold value to you and just kind of stumbling across different kind of treasures that you just you just never know. Okay, so the next element deals with food. Um, obviously food is a big thing, but it's taken a step further in the um, kind of hygge concept, just because there's really an emphasis on like soul warming, comforting food, which makes sense, right? Like when you're trying to comfort yourself in colder months or in the winter, you want something warm and just yummy and just so delicious. Now, obviously the list is endless when it comes to cozy mysteries that deal with food. Um, there's so many culinary cozies uh, that, I mean, you can toss a stick and hit one in the bookstore. There's just that many. So I'm not going to list a thousand of them. I actually whittled it down to just one um, because that's what I thought of first, to be honest. And I wanted to give this book a little bit of love um, because it's not like a chocolate cozy or a bakery cozy. Um, I feel like those are the top two when it comes to foodie cozies. Like don't get me wrong, I love cozy set in bakeries, bake shops, cafes, whatever, um, but I wanted to try something else. And so that said, I have on my list the bread shop mysteries because it's dealing with bread. I love bread. I love carbs. The first book is called Needed to Death. And um, yes, it's technically a shop, but it's not a typical bakery like other more popular cozies and I feel like bread is the spokesperson for for hygge food you know what I mean like technically bread and soup but I didn't find a soup mystery so we're gonna just stick with bread because bread just it gets the job done okay so the last element that I want to talk about that's um, part of the hygge culture or concept or what have you um, it deals with um, 
spending time with friends and family more specifically intimate moments spent with loved ones now you know obviously spending time by yourself is great spending time with large groups is great but there is a sweet spot that the book mentions of groups of three to four people that is really um peak intimate coziness with friends and i found a couple of cozies i didn't count specifically the number of people if i'm being honest but the idea of intimate moments with friends um whether it's dinners or having people over for game nights i really wanted to draw emphasis to that because um you know, I'm sure there have been moments where you're hanging out with just a couple of people and everyone is able to really engage with one another. There's not too many people talking over each other. It's not just like a one-on-one -on -one where, you know, it could be awkward or maybe it's a, more of a date night or anything like that. Again, the concept of like three to four, maybe five people, you guys are all kind of curled around, um, a board game or you're all at the dinner table together being able to talk and interact with one another without having like a long table to where you're not actually able to get to everybody that that feeling right there the first one is the supper club mystery series by Ellery Adams again I don't remember how many people but it's still a small amount like obviously it's a group but it's not like a whole classroom filled <laughs> and it's exactly what it sounds like it's a group of people who get together um technically they're supposed to be holding each other accountable to like stay on track with uh eating well and not falling off the wagon but like who does that you know what i mean like let's enjoy some bread together um and so obviously since dealing with amateur sleuths they solve crimes together which i think is also fun but that's a group for you to um go off of with cozies and then the other one that i have is a league of literary ladies and the first one is called mayhem at the orient express i have had this book on my tbr forever i don't remember if i read the third one or excuse me the second one and i need to go back but um this one deals with a group of ladies as well what's funny is that they are forced to um come together for this book club as part of their like um sentencing like I, i'm forgetting but essentially like the the judge orders uh the women in the group to be in this book club and that's kind of like how they forge this reluctant friendship and then obviously go on to solve murders together um but anyway it sounds like a fun time it's a group of women which you know love that as well and um it again goes within that whole like small groups intimate moments with friends whole concept as well okay so um i kind of went through not everything but what i believe to be like the foundation of things that you would consider huga or cozy living cozy lifestyle whatever um the concept itself whether you have read the book or not i feel like still remains the same still has its purpose especially in these colder months to kind of get you through because let's be honest like after christmas we don't get anything until like i don't know beyond valentine's day like what's the next major thing I don't know but january tends to drag on i think we can all agree upon that like once the dust settles or the glitter settles or the confetti from new year's eve settles it's like okay now what i'm in this weird limbo it's still dark outside but there's no christmas lights up um the sun is still taking its sweet time <laughs> so what am i supposed to do and that's where you really rely on these cozy elements to get you through so us ladies people folks whatever we already have cozy mysteries but just to kind of add like a fun twist like let's see how we can make them even cozier or how we can or incorporate cozy things into our life to add in addition to our cozy mysteries i really just wanted um to make a roundup of videos that were cozy or had an extra element of cozy and i hope that i did that so um let me know just kind of based on my ramblings if you would have any books to add to this list or maybe you have like another pillar or subject that you think fits within the whole huga concept that you think a cozy mystery would match well toward um i just think it's a fun way for us to kind of get the conversation going down in the comments so um if you read any of these let me know if you've got your own recommendations drop those as well i hope you guys enjoyed this video in the meantime happy reading and i'll talk to y'all later bye